on the unceded homelands of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh nations, and we thank the people of these three nations for their warm hospitality. It is a real pleasure to welcome you here this morning to the opening of the library's Natsamut Strathcona branch and the YWCA Cosby Care House. And it it's wonderful to see such a great turnout. I'd like to start by recognizing some of our distinguished guests. From the Musqueam Indian Band, we have Elder Larry Grant, and earlier this morning we also had with us Chief Wayne Sparrow. We have Mayor of Vancouver, Gregor Robertson. We have City Councillors, Councillor Carrie Jang, Councillor Elizabeth Ball, Councillor Raymond Louie, Councillor Adrian Carr, Councillor Andrea Reimer, Councillor Heather Dio, Councillor Jeff Meigs had to leave a little bit earlier, Councillor Melissa DiGenova, and Councillor Tim Stevenson. Thank you all for being here. We have YWCA Metro Vancouver CEO Janet Austin, Andrea Thomas Hill, founder and chair of the Cosby Care Foundation, Rob Turnbull, president and CEO of Street to Home Foundation, and from VPL, we have our own library board chair, Kyla Epstein. We have two former board chair members with us, Catherine Evans and Joan Anderson, both of whom played a role in bringing this, bringing this branch to be. We have VPL board members, Rhonda Sherwood, John Schaub, Karen Hoffman, Commissioner Sarah Kirby Young, and Amanda Carr. And from our VPL Foundation, we have our Chair Susan Knott. Thank you everyone and welcome everyone. Many of you were here with us when we announced the name of this branch a few years ago at the YWCA Crabtree Corner. And many of, us, many of you were here with us for this groundbreaking ceremony just a few years ago. And we have come a long, long way since then and it's such a delight to actually be able to welcome you inside. This project is a partnership of three community organizations that are committed to making a difference in the community and throughout the city. Those partners are the City of Vancouver, the Vancouver Public Library, and the YWCA Metro Vancouver, and we are delighted to have representatives here today, as I mentioned. As well, at VPL, we were privileged to work with the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh representatives on the naming of this branch. And as I mentioned earlier, we are honored to have Chief Wayne Sparrow from Musqueam Indian Band with us today. We were also really honored this morning to have a brushing ceremony coordinated by Chief Ian Campbell and Amanda Nahani from Squamish Nation. And it was a very moving ceremony and a very important way to start this opening. I would like to now invite um, Chief, uh, sorry, Elder Grant from Musqueam Indian Band to the stage to sit, share some remarks from Musqueam. I I just want to say thank you, thank you on behalf of Chief Wayne Sparrow. He had to leave earlier, and uh, I'm here as a Muskim representative to say thank you to all of you that are here today, and welcome to all of you here on the traditional, ancestral, unceded lands of the Huskamina speaking Muskim people, and along with our relatives of Squamish and Salvatore. And I raise my hands and welcome to all of you here. Hi, I'm really, really happy to see this building come to fruition. As it was said earlier, it's been four decades in the minds of people that had a vision to make this area a livable area and also that the people of this area also know how to read so that's something <laughs> that's very important to, to acknowledge that and it's something to know that this area uh, used to be part of the mud flats the waterways of false creek come all the way up into clark drive into Inlet at one time prior to uh, 
colonization. So when the when the first, uh, Indian residential school truth and reconciliation process began, there was that word namoyat namoyat was was said over and over and over and over again to all of the people that attended any of the Indian residential school reconciliation uh, uh, forums that were on to tell the story of the tragedy, tragedy of the Indian residential school program that was created by Canada and maintained by the Christian organizations. So Namoyat was a meaning we are together, we are one together. And when they contacted us and wanted to make that connection of Namoya, the Chief Robert Joseph of uh, Reconciliation Canada was the person that was saying it. But he comes from Alert Bay area, he comes from the Northern Tribe, and the public library wanted to have something to make that connection and approached our community language program to come up with something that would reflect Namoya. And that is really, really important to understand. Namoya meant we are all one, we are together. And it meant more than all of the Indian residential school students coming from all over the province being separated and housed in different communities and learning to become family even though there was no family uh, uh, atmosphere in the school. And also, Namoya means that we are all together. All of the human beings here together in urban Vancouver which probably has the largest urban reserve in Canada, maybe next to Toronto, but uh, it's the largest gathering of indigenous peoples here, and it's represented through the different uh, immigrant groups that were here in Strathcona. And that's really, really something to uh, reflect on, the diversity, the real diversity of Strathcona. Every immigrant group, when I was here going to school at Strathcona School, I think every immigrant group lived in this area. So Namoyet or Natsamat in, uh, in the Hunkamenum language really truly embodies we are one as human beings. We are one as people. Natsamat. We are one, and that's really truly uh, embodied in, in the construction of this building where it now today contains the housing units for single mothers upstairs, and that's sorely needed here in this area where a lot of our accommodations, I would say, even though they are licensed by the city of Vancouver, may not meet the health standards of the province. So that's uh, really, really neat to see something like this happen. So I want to say thank you again to all of you on behalf of Chief Wayne Sparrow and the Musqueam people, the Squamish people, and Slavotar. I said, there was him, this year, the year, Tom. I said, I Thank you. because of the support of City Council and City staff. We would not be here today without their vision, their leadership, and their support. It is now my great pleasure to introduce our Mayor, Mayor Gregor Robertson, to offer remarks on behalf of the City of Vancouver. Thank you, Sandra. Welcome, everyone. Thanks, first and foremost, to, uh, to Larry Grant, to, uh, to all of our Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh elders, 
and uh, di distinguished uh, guests who, who got things started this morning with a great ceremony to open, a uh, brushing ceremony here, song and uh, really important words said to acknowledge this new space. So, Aichiko uh, Siam to all of the Mos our Musqueam, Squamish and Tsleil uh, friends and family, and to all of you for being here. It's great to see this place full. Somebody tells me that the Strathcona Natsumat Library is going to be very full for many years to come, and that's, uh, that's a welcome thing. Today is a great day for Vancouver to see a new library and new affordable housing opening here on Hastings uh, in Strathcona, and much needed, as others have said, and long anticipated by the neighborhood. And all of this is an is, uh, incredibly welcome addition to the community and to the city at large. And this is the first official city building with a First Nations name. Uh, not so much, uh, a lot of thought went into that and, uh, and we wanna see lots more of this. I think that's our, this is the beginning of, of a, big, uh, a big change to uh, welcome back the place names uh, welcome back the language, Hukwamenim uh, language, to make sure that we recognize the history of this place and the names that that, that evolved with uh, our city and the, the place around us. So we're looking forward to a, a vigorous process, uh, particularly in this year of 150 plus, and recognizing the history of looking at uh, naming opportunities of uh, our city assets, of, of uh, important parts of the city that right now don't have names or had names that were um, that were uh, bestowed in absolute uh, disregard or ignorance of the existing names uh, many years ago. So it's an exciting turning point for that as well. This was a very innovative partnership to create this library and, and my hat's off to, uh, to Sandra and the BPL team who, uh, who have worked steadfastly at this, her predecessors, the board, uh, certainly Kyla and Mary Lynn before and Joan uh, before. Uh, many uh, leaders and the board and staff of the VPL who have tenaciously uh, worked towards creating this library here in Strathcona. Uh, big credit to you all and for the innovation of bringing uh, partners to YWCA, Janet and the whole team there and the incredible group of, of funders, the Cosmic Care Foundation, uh, Street to Home Foundation, uh, leadership that stepped up when they saw this incredible opportunity to bring a, a community library and important affordable housing for uh, moms with young families uh, together. It really um, was a breakthrough for us as a city. It's taken a lot of hard work and a lot of uh, steadfast determination to bring it into reality. And here it is, which is super exciting. So my thanks uh, to all of the partners, the Ismaili Council as well, a big uh, important uh, funder uh, in the process, there, these these steps forward uh, to commit resources and uh, and energy to the project were really instrumental all the way along, and it, we wouldn't have gotten here today without everyone continuing to push and make sure that we see this uh, as a reality in Vancouver. Strathcona has waited, as uh, as Joan said, I think uh, over 40 years since this idea uh, was uh, was launched. Uh, the neighborhood's been very patient to have their own library, so uh, we're, we're great, grateful for that. And to see 21 uh, affordable housing units above us here uh, for uh, women-led families is so uh, so needed here in Vancouver now. We, we can use lots more of this. We'll keep pushing on our provincial and federal partners to step up and fund affordable housing opportunities like this. And we'll do it wherever we have city land like this available, where we're building facilities. We're doing it now with fire halls. So the Vancouver Public Library has started a whole new approach in making sure that all, uh, all rebuilds, all new buildings that we do on public land, on city land, we look at uh, affordable housing opportunities as well. So the gathering spaces, the opportunity for the community to use this, and, and such a beautiful building to all the, the craftspeople who designed and built, created this space, a huge thank you to all of you. It's, uh, it, it's breathtaking, frankly, and, and uh, not what you might expect um, uh, in this neighborhood. It's fantastic new building to be here and, and to welcome the community in. So on behalf of the city and my, my city council colleagues who have, uh, who have also been very committed to this since the beginning, a big thanks to everyone involved in this. We're, uh, we're looking forward to doing more like this, being creative, being innovative, and, uh, and recognizing that these communities are, are held together and stronger when we create great spaces like this with respect, 
with understanding, and with investment into our youth and our future. So thank you all so much for, for all of your commitment to Strathcona and not so much the library. Thank you. who work together with the sole purpose of ensuring that VPL provides the most inclusive, responsive, and relevant services to Vancouver. As staff, we value their vision and dedication. I would like to invite Kyla Epstein, Chair of the VPL Board, to share remarks on behalf of VPL. Good morning, everyone. I am so thrilled to be here with you this morning. I feel so grateful to everyone who helped bring us here today to celebrate the long-awaited opening of this library branch. Thank you to Chief Anne Campbell and Amanda Nahani, a former VPL storyteller in residence, who performed an extremely moving brushing off ceremony this morning so that we could open this building and start this space in the right way. As a settler on this land, and as someone who comes to this ceremony as a learner, I'm humbled to be here today to witness this coming together. I know that it will stay with me for the rest of my time as a VPL trustee and really for the rest of my life. Thank you. And thank you to Chief, Ains or Chief Wayne Sparrow who had to leave, but thank you to Elder Larry Grant for your words. I truly appreciate them. And to Mayor Robertson for your words as well. Thank you. I'm going to depart from my notes, which is going to make Sandra very nervous right now. <laughs> I just have to say thank you to Sandra Singh, VPL Chief Librarian, and to the entire leadership team at VPL and all of the staff who work at VPL, to the frontline staff and to everybody. This branch and all the branches across the city and all the services that VPL offer are the work of incredible, dedicated staff members, and I know that I speak on behalf of the entire board, current and past, and I say it is a pleasure to serve the U.S. staff at the library. So thank you so much. <laughs> Public libraries are our community's only fee-free centers for lifelong learning, knowledge exchange, cultural exchange, and for preserving our community's memories and history. Regardless of whether this is done through books, films, I recently heard someone say, Libraries are the project of building a common life so that people from different experiences encounter one another. This incredible branch has been in the works for a long time, as Joan mentioned, and it is truly my honor to serve as the library chair for this opening event. This couldn't be possible without the hard work of past chairs, Joan Anderson, Catherine Evans, who's here as well, and Mary Lynn Baum, who sends her regrets. She really wishes she could be here with us today but also to all of the trustees that I serve with now and in, who have served in the past. It is truly my pleasure. They are incredible volunteers who dedicate their time and their knowledge to offering the best possible public library service. I also want to acknowledge Donna McDonald is here today. She is the outgoing chair of the BC Library Trustees Association, which represents over 700 public library trustees working hard in this province to provide you with library services. Thank you, Donna. And we get done. To our mayor and council, as Sandra mentioned, public libraries are a force for equity, hope, and prosperity across this country and here in Vancouver. Our mayor and our city councillors have supported the VPL in this role for years, bringing us to today's special opening. On behalf of the entire library board, thank you for your ongoing support and recognition of the many contributions that public libraries bring to Vancouver and to all of our lives each and every day. I want to thank the many community members and partners who worked with our amazing staff on naming the branch and the spaces inside. To our collaborators at Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh Nations, who spent time with our staff to explore how we could honor your first presence on this land and also reflect the community consultation that was done for the branch naming and the interior naming. For many, us, for many of us on this board, the decision to name this branch, Natsumatsu Strathcona, will be one of the greatest privileges of our time on the board. We are also pleased to let you know that we are working with Squamish Nation to name this front reading room that you are in now in a way that will honor the value of naming and recognize education and lifelong learning as important values for the Squamish Nation and for VPL. And to the families of Wu Soon, Mary Lee Chan, Nellie Yip Kwong, and Bud Osborne, 
who allowed us to recognize the important contributions of your mother, grandmother, and brother, respectively, and to the development of these neighborhoods served by this branch. Thank you. Each of your family members left an inspiring legacy in this community. Legacies which will have and will continue to benefit all of us. We will celebrate and recognize these commemorations more fully in events coming up in the future. I would like to offer appreciation to the Friends of the Vancouver Public Library and also say that if you are not all members of the Friends, you should join now. <laughs> Their generous contribution to this branch resulted in our digital art installation by Lisa G. Nelson. And I also want to thank Erica Stocking and Lisa for creating artistic works to enhance this branch that will inspire reflection and appreciation for this place in our community. <laughs> And back to staff, because I truly believe that staff do the most important work, to staff of the BPL, the city, and the YWCA, who came together in collaborative spirit. There are clearly too many people to name, but I hope you know that we on the BPL board know how hard you've all worked and how appreciative we are of your contributions to this project. Your passion for this library and housing project and your commitment to excellence have inspired us and it is my honor and pleasure to thank you for your dedication and your accomplishment. I hope each and every staff person feels a strong sense of pride for bringing this building into being. Thank you all. We you have gotten to know our colleagues, friends, and now family, it feels, at the YWCA very well. It's been a pleasure working with such a principled, committed, and collaborative team. And I am now delighted to introduce Janet Austin, CEO of YWCA Metro Vancouver, to offer remarks on behalf of the YWCA. Thank you so much, Sandra. Um, and thanks also to Chief Campbell, um, to Elder Grant, and all the participants in the brushing off ceremony this morning, which was really, t I think, profoundly moving and a wonderful way to um, to start this, the, the official opening of Nuts and Muts and YWCA Cause We Care House. So it is indeed my enormous privilege um, to represent the YWCA at our ceremony today. And joining me from the YWCA are our incoming board chair, Jerry Pryor, uh, board members, Milusha Alibi and Wu Nai Tsang, YWCA Canada board member, Kim Vanderwerd, and of course many of my colleagues from the YWCA. So I think that most of you already know that the YW offers a broad range of services throughout Metro Vancouver, but we do have a special focus on serving the needs of single mothers and their children. These families can be particularly vulnerable. They have the highest rates of poverty and the greatest difficulty finding affordable, safe housing of all family types. So our goal is to help these women make a successful transition to personal and economic independence and to ensure that their children get the best start in life. And because our approach is holistic, I think we can claim a very high degree of success in the programs that we offer, operate throughout Vancouver. <clears throat> So YWCA Cause We Care House will provide 21 units of housing for single mothers and children and 4,500 square feet of outdoor um, and indoor community space where we will provide medical services, mom and child programming, and families with infants who have been diagnosed with developmental dis uh, delays. Residents will also have access to the full array of YWCA programs offered at YWCA Crabtree Corner just down the street, including daily free hot meal programs, early learning and care, legal education and violence prevention programming, FASD support groups, Aboriginal infant development programming and single mother support groups and that's just to name uh, a few of the services that we're able to offer there that can be accessed by the women and children also living here. So in taking on this project, we committed to raise $10.2 million up front in order to cover our share of the capital costs for this project um, and also to establish an operating endowment fund of $700,000. And that's what makes it possible for us to actually offer these units at fully subsidized or deeply subsidized rents. So I'm delighted to tell you that we've achieved that goal thanks to the generous support of many of you here today I wish I had time to acknowledge all of you, but it's particularly important that I recognize our lead donors and partners. So first of all, we're keenly aware that this project would never have happened without the vision and leadership of Mayor Gregor Robertson and all of the members of City Council. 
I want to thank you for providing the site at nominal value and for recognizing the strategic value of partnerships like this one, where YWCA families will have immediate access to the learning and literacy services of the VPL. Special thanks are also due to our wonderful colleague Sandra Singh and the board and staff of the VPL, as well as to Bill Augela and the entire staff team at um, the City of Vancouver that helped us through this project. You've been absolutely fabulous partners. I think projects like this can be complex and challenging and will have many pressure points. But working with you people, and I mean this most sincerely, has been nothing but joy. So if you got more land, Mayor Robertson, bring it on. We would be, we'd be delighted to continue. To so as you heard, the housing component of this project will be called YWCA Cause We Care House in recognition of our lead community donor, the Cause We Care Foundation. So to Chair Andrea Thomas-Hill and the members of your board, I want to thank you for believing in the YWCA's vision and for making that first critical financial commitment of 1.5 million that actually enabled us to launch our fundraising campaign. Uh, to the Street to Home Foundation, and I know Rob Turnbull is here today and will be sharing a few words, we're also grateful for your early contribution of one million that helped us to get this project started. And to our dear friends with the Ismaili Muslim community of BC, uh, represented today by Farouk Manji and a number of his colleagues, uh, we thank you for dedicating the proceeds from the annual Ismaili Walk for Women for three years um, and for supporting this wonderful project and uh, supporting us in so many other ways in our community work. We also had a generous estate gift provided by the Rena Maria Bidden Foundation, which has enabled us to establish that $700,000 operating endowment that will help with our ongoing operating costs. And finally, um, we're privileged to have a very special donor family who wish to remain anonymous, but who have contributed, I will say, very substantially to this project. And I recently received a thoughtful and I think beautifully expressed comment from them that speaks to the core purpose of, of our shared work here. And with their permission, I'd like to share it with you. And here's what they say. Coming from a first generation Chinese Canadian immigrant family, we feel a deep sense of gratitude towards the First Nations people whose unceded territory has provided us with a treasured city to call home over many decades. We hope in turn that this beautiful new residence will be a place of healing, thriving and flourishing for all the women and children who inhabit it. So, could not have said it better. I thought that was beautifully expressed. There are many, many other people here today who have contributed financially to this work or supported the project in other ways, and the YWCA is grateful to all of you. And so i just like to ask for a warm round of applause for all the supporters for the YWCA. philanthropy which I kind of enjoy and it's this money is like manure it does no good unless it is spread so thanks to, thanks to all of you who spread some, <laughs> spread some of that philanthropy in support of a project like this I want to finally thank all of you for sharing the YWCA's vision and for doing your part to make it real Hosiem the library's newest neighbors the children and families who we will sure be regular visitors to this branch, the children and families from the YWCA Cause We Care House. It is my great pleasure to introduce Andrea Thomas-Hill, founder and chair of the Cause We Care Foundation. Um, okay, on behalf of everyone on the board, board of the Cause We Care Foundation, I want to thank our donors, our generous donors and volunteers, and say how proud and honored we are to be involved with this extraordinary project. We are a very small public foundation that started as a group of women and mothers who wanted to do something to help other mothers less fortunate than ourselves. We started small, organizing supply drives at Christmas, Mother's Day, and back to school. But we kept discussing ways we could make a real difference in these women's lives. Then one day, Janet Austin called me up and said she had the perfect project. We went from trying to raise $60 for hampers to raising $1.5 million to help build this important housing community. That was almost seven years ago. 
And while we've grown as an organization and expanded to fundraise for after-school programs for children in need and job training for single mothers, it's the structure upstairs above me that really leaves me speechless. Not only did we commit to raising the necessary funds for the bricks and mortar to help build YWCA Cosby Care House, but we last year raised additional funds to furnish all the common area spaces on the third floor and provide welcome kits for all the 21 families that are moving in. But we will also continue to raise the necessary funds to do what it takes to help these single mother-led families thrive, to succeed and ensure the outcome is a brighter future. Again, we're honored to be here, to hopefully have made a difference and to continue to offer a hand up to the families that live or have access to YWCA Cosmic Care House. Thank you. I actually want to thank Dialogue, the architects, for building such a fantastic building that we get to put our name on. So thank you to them too. Cosmic Care House requires many, many generous donors. And Street to Home Foundation is another key YWCA partner for this new housing. It's a great pleasure to invite to the stage Rob Turnbull, President and CEO of Street to Home Foundation. Good morning. I'm delighted to be here, along with Mayor Gregor Robertson, Sandra Singh and Kyla Epstein with Vancouver Public Library, Janet Austin with the YWCA, and Andrea Thomas-Hill with Cosby Care Foundation. This is the eighth supportive housing project for women and women with children that Street to Home has, street, that street to home has contributed funding to since it began in 2008, and this is the first of two collaborations with the YWCA. I'd like to thank donors Suzanne Bolton and Jeff Mooney for their generous $1 million gift in honor of Linda Mitchell. In total, Street to Home has raised over $30 million for 21 housing projects with more than 1,300 units providing homes to 1,800 vulnerable individuals in Vancouver. But we know that housing is only one piece of the puzzle. Street to Home is brand, uh, broadening its mandate to, uh, and impact by exploring a private sector role in facilitating employment and addiction recovery. We want to remove the barriers in a person's way so they can move freely along their preferred life path. And that's the goal we share with our partner, the YWCA. And why we're so pleased to be here to celebrate the opening of Cosby Care House. Street to Home is proud to be part of such an innovative and bold project. Housing with supports built above a municipal structure, in this case, a public library. I'm delighted that individuals who will call this place home will fully experience what Street to Home believes is truly important, a way forward to changing their lives and building their futures. Thank you. Thanks for the work from many different teams, the city, the YWCA, VPL, the Squamish, must be and Slavertooth staff who we worked with on naming and on this opening ceremony, our project planner, City Spaces, our architects, Dialogue, our, our contractor, Haver Construction. It is so exciting to be within hours of opening our doors to the public and welcoming the community to the Nutsmuts Strathcona branch and to the YWCA Cosby Care House. Thank you so much to all of our speakers for bringing such warm greetings from your organizations and for supporting this incredible project. Thank you to Amanda and Chief Campbell for helping us open this, open this building in the right way. And thank you to you, all of our guests, for joining us this morning. I'd like to invite all of you to join us for some refreshments at, at the back, and our platform party will be available for media questions over the next few minutes. After that, we'll take some photos, and, uh, and then we will invite the mayor and Kyla Epstein, our board chair, to check out the first books from the branch. <laughs> and then at 1 o'clock, we open our doors. Thank you.